Hello everyone. Welcome to module three. We have covered module one and two so far. Module one was an introduction to the course. And in module two, we looked at the knower, that is the seer, that is the self, the known, that is the entire existence, and the process of knowing, and that is awakening to the activity of contemplation, understanding, and realization. We also saw that it is the self, which is the knower, that is the seer, the doer, and the enjoyer, that is the experiencer. Now in this module, in lecture 10 and 11, we'll look into the coexistence of self and body again. We have already discussed about the needs, activities, and response of the self and the body, but now we'll try to understand this through direct observation, and then we'll go about understanding exercises one and two. You already have been doing these exercises, but we'll try to see how the human being can be understood by direct observation through these exercises. In lectures 12 to 14, we'll look into the activities and potentialities of the self, and we also try to see what would be the basis for harmony or problems, that is contradictions in the self. And in lecture 15, we'll look into the various sources of happiness. So in this module, we are going to talk about the activities of the self. And now in lecture 10 and 11, talk about the human being. So module three is about understanding the human being. The same has been written here on the slide. Understanding the human being comprehensively is the first step and the core theme of this course, as you know. Human being is there as a coexistence of self and body. Now, this is something that we have been saying time and again. We have heard this, we have thought about this, but have we really been able to observe this? This is something that we are trying to investigate now. What is this consciousness? What is this body? So we'll then look into the activities and potentialities of the self and the reasons for harmony and contradiction in the self. So if you look at the organization of the lectures, understanding the human being as coexistence of self and body and in-depth investigation into the need, activities and response of both the self and the body that can be reinforced by direct observation. And for that, we'll talk about the practice sessions. We'll have a look at the exercises one and two. And this is what we are going to do in lecture 10 and 11. Then we'll look into the activities and potentiality of the self in further depth and detail in lectures 12 to 14. We'll also see the reasons for harmony and contradiction in the self that we'll do in lecture 14. And then finally, we'll try to review the various sources of happiness in lecture 15. Now in these two lectures, we are going to investigate in further depth and also in further detail about the human being. In particular, we'll try to understand the human being as coexistence of the self and the body. And in-depth investigation into the need, activities and response of both the self and the body will be made. So we could see that the needs of the self are continuous. The needs of the body are temporary. We could also see that the needs of the self are fulfilled by right understanding and right feeling, while the needs of the body are fulfilled by physiochemical objects. We could also see that every activity of the self is continuous, while the activity of the body is temporary. Now, this is something that we have discussed, but have we been really able to observe this? So the question arises, how to observe this? How can I make it a part of my knowing? Otherwise, it only remains as a part of my imagination, my thought, okay? And I'm not completely assured of this. So it may be the case that I do say that I am the coexistence of self and body, but I still live by assuming that I am the body. So how to get rid of this assumption? How to see the self as it is? Isn't it important? What do you think? Is it important to see this? or we can just go ahead by assuming this. Now this course, if you see, uh, is more or less focused on observing the reality. If you look at the content, we are reiterating the same thing again and again, because it's not much to cover in terms of remembering some fresh content, but we need to be able to see the reality by our direct observation. Then only it can become a part of my understanding isn't it? So we'll see how we can directly observe this. A brief discussion of the basic content and the process of exercises one and two will give us an idea about the possible outcome of it and the basis of which we can conclude many things of importance in studying the human being. This will not only let you understand the human being, this will also let you understand the relationship. As we do exercises one and two, we become more observant about our imagination, our feeling, 
the way we associate meaning to the sensation that we get from the body and the way we decide our living. So all these can be understood and we'll see how it can be done. So we'll go about understanding exercises one and two and each one of us is doing this exercise for developing ourselves. So I am also a co-explorer. I am also in the process of observing this reality. And when I share, it's not only that I am sharing the content with you. I'm also trying to observe the same thing within me. So this is in terms of developing the right understanding and also purification of accumulated feelings and thoughts, which make our sanskar. So in the process, two things will happen. One, I'll go to understand the reality. Second, the assumptions that I have been carrying within me, my old sanskars, they also get evaluated in the process. So the target, if you see, could be at the level of just living. Now, what is living? So when we say that our target is only living, so we try to keep the body alive. And for that, what we require is essentially the physical facilities. But if you look at your concern, it's not only to live, it's to live with happiness. Now, when you talk about happiness, we do want to live in relationship because in relationships only we feel happy. If you are isolated, if you are not able to fulfill the relationship, you are not happy. So the second target could be to live with happiness, isn't it? To live with fulfillment for that relationship is required. But if you look at the basic aspiration, it is not only to live with fulfillment, it is to live with continuous fulfillment, continuous happiness. And for that, right understanding is also required. So we require right understanding, we require relationship as well as physical facility. When we have all the three, we are able to ensure our living with continuous fulfillment. When we are only trying to fulfill the relationship, we are working to be happy. But when we are only working for physical facility, we are just trying to survive. So for living with continuous fulfillment, that is continuous happiness, we are doing these exercises. In the first course on UHV, we investigated into the basic human desire, the basic human aspiration, and we identified that it is continuity of happiness. We had concluded that in order to ensure continuous happiness, we need to develop three things, right understanding in the self, right feeling and thought in the self, and competence or right living with the world outside. Now, this is rephrasing what we were discussing earlier. So essentially, when we say relationship, there are two parts of it. One part is the right feeling, right thought in the self. And the second part is the expression. Now, expression comes naturally when you have the right feeling and right thought in the self. So the right understanding has to be ensured in the self. The right feeling and right thought also has to be ensured in the self, isn't it? And then when you go for ensuring the competence or right living with the world outside, we learn the expression in our relationship. We also learn how to fulfill the needs for physical facility. For that also, we have to understand how to make out the need for physical facilities rightly. We also have to understand the harmony in the nature so that by participating in the harmony in the nature, at least not disrupting it, we are able to fulfill the needs of the body and then only our production processes, our managerial process can ensure our sustenance of living with continuous fulfillment, isn't it? So try to make it out again for yourself. Are you able to get these three things? So to ensure continuous happiness, do we need right understanding or not? And ultimately, where is it going to be ensured in the self or the body? Similarly, do we need to ensure right feeling and right thought? Isn't it? When we have right feeling and right thought, then only we are able to fulfill the relationships rightly. And for interacting with the world outside, we need to learn skills. We need to develop the competence. And for interacting with the world outside, we do need to develop the competence for our right living, which will include our expression in behavior as well as our skills in work. So try to make it out for yourself. The same thing written here, but little elaborately. So we are doing these exercises in order to develop these three things. Now, when you say right understanding in the self, what is to be understood? So something that we had discussed earlier, what is to be known, right? So what is to be understood? What is to be known? So it is the complete existence. So the existential reality has to be understood. Now, when we talk about the existential reality, it starts from the self. So I have to understand the self. I have to understand the body. I have to understand the coexistence of self and body, how the two are interacting. 
I also have to understand the family, the society, the nature, and ultimately the entire existence. And when it's existence, it is nature, some of in space. And that has to happen in the self, by the self, isn't it? Are you able to see this? That this has to happen in the self and that has to happen by the self. I only have to explore, investigate, and then only I can understand. So put very briefly, we need to have the right feeling and thought about the relationship, harmony, and coexistence. So is my feeling always in terms of relationship, always in terms of harmony, always in terms of coexistence? This is something that I have to keep on exploring. You have to keep on exploring. That is something that we, as a human being, have to ensure within oneself. And that, again, has to happen in the self, by the self. Now, when it comes to competence or right living, of course, that competence has to be earned in the self. And that would mean we are able to ensure our living in relationship, living in harmony, living in coexistence with the world outside. Now, when you go to talk about your relationship with a human being, so we need to have behavior which can lead to mutual happiness. And this is something, again, we have been saying. So in any relationship, at any point of time, we do need to ensure that our behavior is mutually fulfilling. I also feel happy interacting with other human being. The other also feels happy interacting with me. When we talk about work, it is our interaction with the rest of nature. And we have to ensure that it leads to mutual prosperity. So on one hand, it has to fulfill my needs and that is to say the needs of the body in terms of physical facilities at the same time it has to enrich it has to preserve it has to rightly utilize the rest of nature so that the nature is also prosperous and we are also prosperous isn't it and thirdly we have to work out our participation in the entire nature leading to the fulfillment of human goal so when we talked about the society we saw that we all have a common goal living in the society and what is that common goal? So happiness, that is right understanding and right feeling in every individual, prosperity in every family, trust, that is fearlessness in the society and mutual fulfillment, that is coexistence in the nature. And these four goals have to be fulfilled. That only can be termed as the common goal. So this is all that we are going to discuss now. So if you look at the focus in these exercises, we'll work on the self first. And we'll see that once we are able to set the self right, we are able to live in harmony within and also we get ready to live in harmony with the world outside. Can you see this? Once you are in harmony within, you very naturally participate in the harmony outside. But if you're not in harmony within, you're not able to participate in harmony, rather you create disharmony outside. So our major focus therefore will be on ensuring one, right understanding of the existential reality that includes the self, body, family, society, nature, and the entire existence in the self. So this would be one. Secondly, to ensure the right feeling and right thought on this basis. And what would it mean? So the right feeling and right thought of relationship, harmony, and coexistence that is again going to happen in the self by the self. So this is our major focus. If you look at exercises one and two, this is something that we are going to focus upon. So to live with fulfillment, we need to understand. And to understand, we need to see, to observe. To see, we need to pay attention. That is, we have to be mindful. So I can understand only when I observe the reality. For example, if I want to understand myself, I have to observe myself, isn't it? I have to observe my thoughts, my desires, my expectation. I have to observe my natural acceptance. And if I want to observe myself, then I have to pay attention. So I have to be mindful of my own imagination. What is going on inside me? If I can be mindful of what is going on inside me every moment, then I'm aware of my current state every moment. And that will help me find out my real state of being. So in these exercises, we are paying attention to see, to understand, and ultimately to live with fulfillment. We tend to make mistakes in our living with a reality that we do not understand. So if I do not understand something, it is very natural that I'm going to make mistakes in living with it. If I do not understand the human being, right? So how do I behave in a way so that I do not make any mistake in my behavior? 
if i do not understand what air is what water is what soil is what the animals are what the birds are what the plants and trees are and i have to interact with them then i am bound to make mistakes so you can observe this very uh, minutely in your day to day behavior work and participation to see that we tend to make mistakes in living in our relationship if we do not understand the relationship now relationship is a very important issue for each one of us and many times we do suffer in relationship because the mutual happiness is not ensured and we just assume that i hope this uh, relationship gets set right but how to have the relationship set right this is possible only when when i pay attention to the relationship otherwise i keep on making mistakes in the relationship and many times i keep on finding faults in the other right without being able to see what is my role in that relationship so if you do not understand relationship you cannot have fulfilling relationship very natural this is something that is going to happen isn't it so there are two important aspects while paying attention one is the object of attention and the other is the process of paying attention so you are the seer you are the observer you are the knower right and you are paying attention to something be it the other human being be it the rest of nature be it yourself so if you start understanding yourself you'll see that you are the observer and you are the object to be known so you are the object of attention and then there is a process of paying attention how do i pay attention do i pay attention to the form and shape of the other object do i pay attention to the properties of the other object or something else can i pay attention to the natural characteristic also of the other object the innateness the coexistence and how do i pay attention so these are two important aspects so as we go along this will be more clear to you we'll start making out the object of attention and we'll also see what to be the process of paying attention isn't it now while paying attention as you mentioned earlier these are the two important aspects the object of attention and the process of paying attention so object of attention is whatever is to be understood to be lived with and as i said it could be the other human being it could be yourself it could be any entity in the nature and the process of paying attention is being aware and uh, you see that when you try to be aware you might have a natural tendency and the second thing is process of paying attention and that is to be aware and that essentially means to evaluate without any reaction so many times it so happens that when we start paying attention we start reacting also because we have a burden of preconditionings or our inclination to sensations and by virtue of that we keep on reacting so can we pay attention without reacting can we evaluate without reacting this is something that we have to observe so what is to be understood so we have to understand all that we live with the self the body the family the society the nature and ultimately the entire existence and this is all that we have to understand when you say entire existence it includes everything it includes the space and also the nature so the nature is submerged in space there are four orders in nature there are two kinds of units in nature and we need to understand each and everything can you say that you want to understand up to a limit and not beyond that in fact the more you are able to understand your curiosity your eagerness to understand is on the rise and you do not want to stop anything before understanding the whole thing that is the whole existence now in the first course on uhv that is uhv2 we have seen that existence is coexistence and that essentially means that the units are there which are of two kinds material and consciousness and they are submerged in space so we'll try to understand these three things one is the consciousness that is the self second is the material and one example of material could be the body and the third is the coexistence or space now these are three things to be understood and we have to pay attention to these three and based on these only the exercises have been made so by way of the following exercises if you look at that exercise 1 is to understand the consciousness that is self in detail so as you go doing exercise 1 you'll we'll see that we pay attention to the self the consciousness step by step and we become aware of that in exercise 2 we pay attention to the material starting with the body in detail so 
we pay attention to the material thing uh, and body is also a material thing so we start paying attention to that and gradually you'll see that if i'm able to understand my body i'm also able to understand the rest of nature so of course the material things i'm able to understand the material things we'll briefly touch upon exercise 3 which is for understanding the coexistence the space but we'll not go into detail of that so try to make out for yourself whether these three exercises are going to be meaningful for you would you like to understand yourself by direct observation would you like to observe your coexistence with the body through direct observation and would you also like to understand uh, pay attention to the coexistence that is the submergence of nature in space so these are the three exercises we'll not talk about exercise three in detail because this needs some more preparation on your part but of course we will be doing exercise one and two this is something that we started doing also in our practice sessions now looking at existence we can say that yes units are there space is there units are all limited in size space is something which is all pervading it does not have a limit so space is there everywhere space is outside the unit space is inside the unit so if you look at your body the space outside the body the space even inside the body and the space everywhere if you look at the planets these all planets are there in space so each and every entity is there in space and space is there everywhere the units are limited in size so if you look at your body it is again limited in size if you look at the planet earth it is also limited in size and so many celestial bodies are there they are all limited in size so every unit is limited in size being in space and these are all submerged in space now if you look at the units there are two kinds of units so one kind is material units and the other kind is consciousness units now an example of the material unit is body and as a consciousness we have the self and then the third thing is there which is the space the coexistence which is not a unit it is something different from the unit so exercise one if you see it is focused on the self exercise two is focused on the body exercise three is focused on coexistence space now how to observe the coexistence the space so you can observe the distance between two units you can also observe the relationship between two units and since these two units are there in space observing these two you start being aware of the space so this is the sequence that we are going to follow we'll start with exercise one we will try to see the self through direct observation then we will go to exercise two uh, we will try to observe the body and the coexistence of self and body and thirdly we will try to observe the coexistence and space and for that we are going to pay attention to the distance between two units and the relationship between two units now to see to observe what does it mean who observes who sees so we have eyes in the body and we see through eyes many times right but the eyes are a part of the body and eyes are material the body is material so the seeing which is a conscious activity cannot be done by the eyes eyes only serve as an instrument so who is the seer the self is the seer so the self observes the reality the eyes only work as an instrument for the self so the self is the seer the observer the body eyes for example is used as an instrument as and when required this is also important that i use the eyes as and when required isn't it now if you observe the sensation we take the sensation from the body as and when required not every moment we give instruction to the body also as and when required not every moment but the activities in the self are going on every moment right so the self is there the activities are there these activities are conscious activity in the self and these are continuous and we utilize the body which is a temporary unit the organs also being temporary and utilize this body temporarily only as and when required try to observe this try to find it out whether the self observes or the eyes observe so we may have some idea that it's the eyes which observe but it's not the case in fact i'll give an example let's say if i place this pointer in front of you 
you get one kind of view. If I place this pointer like this, you get another kind of view. If I hide the pointer in my hands and then ask you, what is this? You again say that this is the pointer. Now, how do we make out whether this is a pointer or not? Every time a different kind of image is formed in the self. Every time a different kind of image is formed in the eyes. But it's the self which makes out that this is the pointer every time. Isn't it? So to see, that is to observe, this, these are the three things that we are going to do. So seeing the self by the self, the consciousness, observing the consciousness. Secondly, seeing the body by the self, that is the consciousness, observing the material. And thirdly, seeing the coexistence by the self, where the consciousness is observing the coexistence. And that is to say that we start by observing the distance between the self and the body. And we start by observing also the relationship between the self and the body. And going about this, we are able to observe the coexistence. We are able to observe the space. But we'll focus primarily on exercises one and two. Now here you can see that the self is the observer, the seer, the knower, and not the eyes. The eyes are only an instrument. Now once you are able to see that eyes are only an instrument and you are the seer, it doesn't matter whether you keep your eyes open or closed. It's up to you. Essentially, you have to observe, isn't it? Whether you are sitting or you are standing or you are walking, hardly matters. Essentially, all these are there as an activity when you are interacting with the body. But your observation can continue. So you are the observer, you are the seer. And you are the one who is going to make out. Something that we had discussed earlier also when we said that the self is the knower. The self is the knower, that is the seer, the self is the doer, and the self is the observer. Now, living within and living with the world outside, if you look at that. So if you look at the world outside, there's something outward. Okay. And that essentially means that there is something outside and you are related to that. So let's say there is a building in front of you. It is something outside you and you are related to the building. It can also be a human being who is outside you, right? And you are in relationship with that human being. Now, we might carry multiple assumptions about the relationship, about the recognition and fulfillment. So we do carry assumptions about relationship and the way we assume, we recognize and fulfill. So applying the power of the self whether it is outward or inward. So when it is outward, attention is outside, isn't it? Now, when we are trying to look at something outside, primarily we are taking some sensation from the body. So you can see that we keep on receiving the sensation from the body and keep on instructing the body. Now here I am getting some sensation through the body for something outside, isn't it? Now, when you start looking inward, you are looking within, in the self. And that is to look into the awaking, and that is to look into the knowing part, the assuming part. So, one way of looking at things would be looking inward first and then going to the outward. Now, if you look at the process of looking inward, there is something that is happening within, in the self. And then we are trying to look at the knowing part, the assuming part. So the other way could be, I look inward, I get clarity, I get understanding, and then I look outward. So we try to look within first and then in relationship outside. And then knowing, assuming, recognizing and fulfilling, all are taken care of. So applying the power of the self outward or inward, if you see, when you are applying it inward, the attention is inward. And with this clarity, you are able to look at things outward. So the attention is inward and with that attention goes outward as and when required. So the attention has to be driven inward. Most of the time we are used to pay attention outward and then we cannot understand the things because the knower, the seer itself is not clear about oneself. So how can the outward world be known? So we'll start looking inward in these exercises. We'll start looking within oneself in these exercises. So observing the self by the self, and that is essentially to mean that we start looking within. 
now when we say observing the self by the self i am the seer and i am the seen isn't it i am the object of attention and i am the one who is going to pay attention so of course i have to look within so this is just one way of looking within and not the only way let me say at the very beginning that this is one proposal for you and this is just one way this is one proposal to observe oneself and not the only way the steps mentioned in this exercise are one possible set of steps and one may think of other possibilities also and that's why we say that these are not the only set of steps but i'll say that we have experimented with this and this has worked out quite well with us and hence we are proposing this to you now for these observations try to find out do i need to use the eyes to see the self what do you think do i need to use my eyes for example to see my imagination do i need to use my eyes what do you think if i have to look into my imagination my thoughts my desires my expectation i don't need to use my eyes but again you have to keep it open for yourself so if i look my if i look at myself i feel that yes it is not required so i can give rest to the eyes i can keep the eyes in a comfortable position it can be open it can be closed it can be half open whatever is comfortable with you you can proceed with that again ask yourself do i need to take any work from the body in the process when i am observing myself do i need to take any work from the body for example to see my feeling do i have to take any work from the body now again if you try to make it out we we'll see that no we do not need to take any work from the body here also we saw that we do not need to use the eyes so you can give rest to the body so keep the body in a comfortable position in any posture which is comfortable but of course your observation has to continue so you can be in a sitting posture you can be standing okay you can be squatting whatever but if you lie down and close your eyes then of course it is a rare possibility that you will be able to observe yourself but still you can also try that so you have to choose some posture and some comfortable position of the eye where you can continue with the exercise now in the exercise 1 we are observing the self by the self and these are the seven steps so i'll go over the steps and in practice sessions you already have been doing that here uh, we'll recap all that you have done and all that you have to do so first of all be aware observe your imagination at this moment that is the desire that is your feeling your thought your expectation so the imagination is made up of desire thought and expectation and you have to observe your imagination and there also in particular if you can observe your feeling that would be better so you have to be aware of your feeling your imagination then you can see whether the feeling that you are having at this moment is it naturally acceptable to you or not so when you become aware of your feeling you can find out whether the feeling is naturally acceptable to me or not it is something again for you to make out without naming the feeling without labeling the feeling you just try to make out whether you are comfortable with that or not this is the second step in the third step you can find out whether you are comfortable in harmony you are happy with the feeling that you have at this moment or not so in the first step we are trying to be aware of the imagination in the second step you are trying to find out whether it is naturally acceptable to you or not in the third step you are trying to find out whether you are comfortable with this or not right now in the fourth step you are trying to make out who decide the feeling that you have at this moment so who is the decision maker here for the feeling that you have inside did you decide it or someone else or the situation outside decided it now this is very important many times we do assume that if i have any feeling in me let's say feeling of opposition somebody else is responsible for that the other person has misbehaved with me and that's how i have developed the feeling of opposition for the other but again if you observe it you may find something different so try to find out who has decided the feeling that you have at this moment is it you or somebody outside some situation outside who has decided now again i'll say that don't uh, give any judgment here but keep it open keep it keep observing it so in the fourth state we are trying to make out who decided 
in the fifth step what we are saying is that try to make out on what basis did you decide the feeling that you have at this moment what had been the basis did you decide it on the basis of understanding or on the basis of an assumption so whatever feeling you have at this moment what has been the basis for this for example if you develop a position within you and you can see that yes i am having the feeling of position within me if you look at step 2 you are able to see that this is not acceptable to you naturally and i suppose you are not comfortable with that also but again i keep it open to you to observe now in step 4 you can try to find out who decided the feeling so one response could be like you decided the feeling it is you who is responsible for having that feeling in the same situation somebody else might not carry the feeling of opposition while you carry it isn't it then you can find out what has been the basis of deciding that feeling which you have at this moment did you decide it on the basis of understanding or on the basis of some assumption for example if you have doubt on intention of the other you assume that the other is trying to make you unhappy or the other intentionally wants to make you unhappy for example if you assume that the other wants to make you unhappy intends to make you unhappy with this assumption you will develop the feeling of opposition but if you are able to see that no it is not the intention of the other others intention is right only the competence is lacking then we will not have the feeling of opposition so you can try to make out what has been the basis of this decision making in the next step you can try to find out which feelings are naturally acceptable to you now this is being aware of your natural acceptance is it the feeling of relationship or opposition harmony or disharmony coexistence or struggle what is acceptable to you naturally if feelings of relationship harmony and coexistence are naturally acceptable there is a need to understand the relationship harmony and coexistence isn't it so in this step 6 we are trying to make out what feelings are acceptable to us naturally and if you are able to see that yes it is feeling of relationship feeling of harmony feeling of coexistence that is acceptable to us naturally okay then very naturally you are able to see that there is a need to understand it unless you understand these feelings you will not be able to continue with this so in step 7 what we are saying ensure that the feeling that you have at this moment is in line with the feeling of relationship harmony and coexistence and not otherwise so in step 6 you are able to see the need for understanding this feeling in step 7 you are able to ensure this feeling so here you are able to make out the need and here what you are trying to do is to ensure that this feeling is there in you now if these feelings are ensured in continuity then we'll be in a state of harmony and happiness every moment that is will be in a state of continuous happiness so it is important to note that when i am able to understand the relationship harmony and coexistence in its completeness then i will be able to decide my feeling the thought accordingly and i will always be comfortable within i will be in a state of continuous happiness so now going through all these steps you are able to see very clearly that there is a need to understand the relationship there is need to understand the harmony the coexistence now these are the seven steps very short steps <laughs> to uh, look at them but when you start doing that you will find that a lot of work may be required to be done at your end for example when you try to be aware you may see that you are not aware every moment you lose your awareness if you lose your awareness the other steps will not follow so you can start with the step 1 and if you are able to bear all these steps within you in your imagination the other steps will gradually get taken care of and step 1 is very important to be aware the more awareness you have the other things start following and if you are able to see the need to understand within you the harmony the relationship the coexistence then only you are able to set the right priority for right understanding the first priority otherwise it may be the case that we assume that the problems are outside people in my family people in the society people in my organization are responsible for my unhappiness 
and then you seldom pay attention to your own feeling you seldom pay attention to the decision maker who is having this feeling and you are also not able to make out the need to understand and you may feel that what i am doing is right the other is wrong and hence the other has to improve i am perfect and this kind of common assumption is observed but if you start doing these steps sincerely you will be able to see the lack of understanding in you and also be able to work on the understanding part in you so in today's lecture we try to study the human being through direct observation we saw that there are three exercises to be done one is observing the self by the self the second is observing the body by the self and the third is observing the coexistence by the self and in today's lecture we detailed upon the exercise one you of course have been practicing also the various steps of exercise one and today we summarized all the steps towards the end of the lecture and i hope today's lecture has further sharpened your study about the human being about the self and in the next lecture we'll go further to discuss exercise 2 which will further sharpen your study about the human being so that is all for the lecture today thank you